today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable pet collage. And actually I call it Paws for Art. P-A-W-S, Paws for Art. And it's a cat or dog collage. And we use torn paper and just scraps of torn paper actually. And then we use some oil pastels for the eyes and nose and we paint on and use oil pastels for the facial features and it comes out adorable. I do this with elementary kids and I also do it um, after school as a parent student night and it comes out really adorable with them as well and everybody has a great time on this. But I'm gonna show you step by step how we do this and it is so simple and I hope you enjoy the lesson. Be sure to subscribe and like the video if you enjoy this and share it with your friends. At the very end of the instructions, you will see the examples from my students and from my um, parent night. Um, I hope you enjoy the video. The first step in making the collage is to actually just glue the background paper quickly. So we're going to glue and collage. And you can see how I ran a spiral. And I use this as an example for my kids. You just start in the center and do a spiral to the outer edges, and then you're going to glue your paper radiating out from a center point. So let me go, go ahead and show you how I do this. And we don't do a lot of detail on this project. This I do very simple and quick. I've done this as an activity of an after school. Uh, the first thing you do is start from the center and start your spiral. And put, a, put enough glue on the spiral, just like that. This glue bottle's working a little slow. Um, so it leaves a little bit of a puddle, a little bit of a thickness like that, because then we're gonna be putting our strips on top and it needs to spread out a little bit. And I'm going in a circle right to the edge, kind of like a dartboard or a gigantic spiral. I don't have to worry about this over here where it hangs off. Uh, sometimes we end up just cutting off the paper anyways. Uh, so just quickly do your spiral and then take your paper strips. And for the collaging papers, we use between 18 to 25 strips. Um, I tell the kids start with 25 and then go ahead and you know bring back the leftovers if you don't need them. That way you have it all, all at your seat um, ready to go. You may need more or less, you know, depending on the size and how closely you put them together. It doesn't need to cover the entire page. So we start from the center and we're gonna radiate out like a sun. And what I do is I block it out, top, come straight to the top. This is the easier way to do it. Coming from the center, and then you just fill in the middle. And I'm just randomly placing these, no rhyme or reason. And I have it overlap, you'll see how it's gonna overlap here. I try not to overlap too much in the center, but it's okay if it goes off the page. I'm just gonna fill in the in-betweens here. Remember, we're gonna add the eyes to this. We're gonna add, you know, cut paper nose, and then we're gonna add some paint to it as well. So every little spot doesn't matter. Just quickly place the paper strips using a variety of color. Now, if I have a little pie shape here, I can take the narrow piece of the paper strip and just stick it inside here. That fills it in nicely. Sometimes you have a torn end. All my strips are just random here. And when you tear the paper, I have a video on how to tear this down too. It'll leave this narrow piece and that works good. If you don't have a narrow piece, you can even just tear it or just leave it, that's up to you. And that's what I use some of the smaller pieces for, just to fill in. I've just tucked that one. You can see how I tucked it behind this one here. And like I said, it does. You don't have to get all these edges here. Oops. 
but I like the radiating from the center up. That seems to look the best. So this should not take long. Like I said, this is a quick version. I found this on the internet, and I think it was with older kids, but it did take them quite a while to do. And this is just my simple quick version. And then tear when you have little areas. And I think that's good. I don't have to, let me show you over here. I don't have to get it all covered. You know, having the white show is fine. Now our next step is to go ahead, put set this aside to dry, and we can work on our facial features. So I'm just gonna move this off and work on facial features. What I give the kids is I give them some dog face tracers or cat face tracers. And if you're at home, what you can do is you can even draw your own eyes or nose, but I gave them the tracers so that this is a faster process. But you can draw your own eyes or nose. You can also go online and print out some line drawings of cats or dogs and then enlarge them on a copy machine. And then you can trace your own and make your own face tracers or like I said, just draw your own. Once you have the, the eyes and nose, you're going to go ahead and trace them onto black paper right here. And you can trace them on with a pencil, anything you'd like. The first step is to color a target once you've traced your eyes. Starting in the center, we're gonna go light, you can see how we've done this, to a darker color using an eye color. And then you smear the edges with your fingers. I'm tracing the eyes and I chose to do a cat eye. The difference between the cat and the dog eye is the pupil is V-shape in the cat and with the dog, the dog's eyes tend to have a circular shaped pupil. And then of course, this is the iris around here. Now, when I trace this, I'm just gonna trace it with a lighter color so you can see better. This arrow is the center. There's a little bit of a difference in shape here on the eyes that I've traced. This is the center where the nose would be here. So this eye faces this way. And I have it drawn with an arrow for my students. And so we just go ahead, trace around the template, and I have my students use a pencil. And then to make this the center, because I don't want to trace it again, because I'll have two eyes facing inward on this side, so I'm going to reverse it here. You can see how I show here, this is the center. So take it, flip it over, so now both eyes are correct. You have one left eye and one right eye that face the center. I'm just gonna bring it in closer because I need to have room for the nose over here. So I need two eyes and then the nose, one nose that I'm gonna trace. And then I go ahead and take my little cat nose and I'm gonna trace this. I'm gonna do some values of pink for this one. So I'm just gonna trace it with pink. But like I said, use a pencil if you have a stencil because what's happening is then you're gonna dirty your stencil. Okay, once you have it traced, now we're gonna do the target. I call it a target. We start in the center, we do a light value of color and work our way to the outer edge with a darker value of color. So I go ahead, I'll do a just green eyes for this one because they show up nice and bright. So start with a center value and I'm just gonna do a circular right in here. I'm gonna put black on top, remember. Start at circular. This is just a light value green. And now I'm working my way up. And I'm just using, um, I'm using a, I think, I think there's 48 of them here. A large palette of color. So I have all the different values. If you don't have all the values, you can just make your own simply by adding colors on top of each other. For example, if I want a really dark green, oh, I wanna do this one at the same time. So I'm going around quickly here. 
and then I'm going to add the darker value here right to the edge Now I'm gonna put some whites of the eyes in over in here. It's okay if you color out of the lines because you're gonna be cutting them out. And I always have my students um, draw this before they cut it out and color it in. Now you're gonna simply just draw a circle with your finger, starting with the center, lightly blending in your colors. Circular motion lightly, and the colors just blend on the edges. I'm gonna put a little bit darker value. I have some really dark green in here. I wanna come right to the edge here with that dark green. And you can adjust too, if you rub too much, go back over. Don't saturate the page with color, meaning don't push really, really, really hard because then you won't be able to apply other color on top. Like I just added some more green on top and that won't work. Some kids push way too hard. And now I'm gonna take a clean finger, I've been blending with just one, and just hit the white area. I'll do that first on this one. Just quickly do the center. Don't rub too, too hard. And if you do, you can always come back, like I said, and add a little bit more color, but if you've pressed way too hard, sometimes it's, it's just hard to manipulate the color and move it. All right, so I'm gonna rub it in a circle here, and then that's done. Now I'm gonna add my V shaped, and this is the center here. I'm gonna trace around my edges. Remember, this is the center, and this side's the center for the eye. So my V is gonna be the same on both sides. So I'm gonna have it come from the top, because it's a cat eye. Now I'm gonna paint on top of this too, so it'll darken it up a little bit. Add a V on both sides for your cat. And then I'm gonna trace around this with my black. And I'm gonna do the same on both sides. For the nose, I color in, you can do a dark color or gray. You can even add just a plain black nose if you'd like. And then I add some nostrils to it, right here, after I color it all into color. And then I add a little bit of highlights up at the top here with white. And then I'm smudging it with a finger. So let me go ahead and show you how I do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and do a pink nose here. So I lightly color the area with pink. I'm gonna just give it a light smudge here. And then if you wanna add any other darker areas of pink, you can go ahead and do that. I'm kinda leaving the top area open for my highlight and then this area for some dark. Then I'm gonna use the black oil pastel and kind of outline this area a little bit and just blend that in a little bit. And then I add my white highlight on the top, right in here, and always smudge it in with a clean finger. And there we go, our nose is good to go. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cut everything out and start assembling. We're gonna add face details now. And you can draw the face details first with pencil and then paint over them with marker or with paint over them with temper paint or you can use oil pastel or a little bit of both. I kind of like a little bit of both. Um, but I have my students first off draw it with pencil just in case they make a mistake. But go ahead and position your eyes. Um, and this is, since this is a cat, I have a cat example here. You wanna make sure your eyes are, you know, a little bit above the nose, but placed the width of the nose. So they line up with the width of that nose here. As wide as the nose is, is where you should be placing the inner edge of your eyes. And look at some of the line drawings. Um, pull up line drawings on the internet and it'll show you some simple line drawings that you can use 
for your face detail. That's the best way to do it. It simplifies the shape. Or actually even just look at your own pet if you have a pet at home. But go ahead and glue them down once you get into a position that you like. I don't add a lot of glue and I always tell my students to rub in the glue on the back with your finger. That makes it a little bit tackier and just sticks a little bit better. So I'm going to place my eyes and this is the inside of the eyes. Make sure you have the inside match up with the inside. Again, as wide as the nose. And then cats tend to have it tilted a little bit up like that, depending on your cat picture. See how these eyes are slightly tilted upward. There. So once you get the position you like, now you're gonna go ahead and start sketching in all your little detail. And that's what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna sketch it in so you can see it with a, an oil pastel and then I'll add some paint on top. And so the detail's going to be on the little, I'm gonna move this because that was crooked a little bit. So the details are just gonna be down here. I'm gonna draw this letter U shape here. Okay. And I wanna make it line up to where the pupil is coming down. Sometimes we make the mouth a little bit too small or too big, depending. Line it up with the pupil, down and around. Because we have such a large scale paper that we sometimes get off on our size. So I always line it up with pupils and parts of the animal's body. I've got the little chin in. You can add whiskers if you'd like. I am gonna do some just light lines of whiskers here. And then I'll add maybe some whiter gray right on top. My stand is in the way here. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of detail up at the top Let's see if you can see that. Oh, you can't see that part. But basically, sketch out your detail. I'm going to round. I'll do it around on here. I want to come down here. Now, if you want to, you can tear. Let me move my stand here so you can see the side. Say if your animal ends here and you don't want the fur to come off. That's why I didn't glue it to the very edge. You can always just tear these edges if you need to, or you can leave it the long way. Um, but then once you have your detail, let me move it over, then take your black tempera paint, slide it this way, then take your black tempera paint and go ahead and add in, you know, right on top. You can even trace the, trace the nose and tr add in your, Black, add in the black on the eyes. And then trace over all your detail with your black tempera paint. And you can add a white highlights if you need to with your oil pastel. I'm gonna add some furry textures. Sometimes that looks really great. Let me move this up a little so you can see it. And if you wanna add little fur lines, you can put the fur lines in. I'm gonna bring this line down in toward the nose to define that. I'm a little crooked here. I'm just getting really big. My thing is really huge, this paper. So I apologize for this little mess up. But that's basically how you do it. You just add in your details and paint away. Now I do want to add a little bit lighter whiskers here, right on top. And that's why I love the oil pastels, because it covers nicely right on top of the torn paper. Oh, I bumped. I bumped. And then sometimes they even have this little, these little dots in here, if you want to add those dots as well. And just kind of play around with your paint and your oil pastel. See, if you make a mistake, always just wipe it off with your finger. And I did wanna bring in a little bit darker eyes here, because these pupils are real important. Oh, here's a piece of scrap paper. 
that was sticking. And then even a highlight on your eyes, and you wanna match the highlight. If you have it on that side, it matches exactly where it is. There. All right, and there we have it. Our amazing cat collage. paper I used a paper tablecloth I had put out when my students were painting and we painted on it for a couple weeks and this is just like the paint spills and what it looks like after kids paint on it paint on paper for a week as a tablecloth and you can see it's kind of messy and everything but this actually makes really great collage paper and I tear it into big chunks like this first and then I tear it down into paper strips. Um, I find the grain of the paper too. There's a way of tearing it so you can get it straight. If you start tearing this big butcher paper and it starts tearing into like big clumps, not, not beautiful strips, then you go to the opposite side of it, you know, either horizontal or vertical to find that grain. And then you'll end up with, when you, when you find the right grain to tear, you'll end up with skinnier pieces like this. So this is how I'm preparing my paper for the um, cat and dog collages. I'm gonna show you how I tear the strips so you can understand what I mean by that grain. This is the running with the grain of that paper. That's, that's exactly, that's what I call it. I use like fabric terms. And I just do it about a, probably that's about an inch, a little bit over an inch. And then it tears off into nice strips. So if I can show you like this, tear it down. And it doesn't have to be perfect. That way you get it going um, vertically like that. And then I separate a little bit so it's about uh, 12 to 16 inches long like that. But it tears a lot better. Um, and then if you like, if you don't like the piece, you know, you can always just tear it again and get it a little bit thinner. Right down here, just like that. And that's how I prepare for the collages.